So here we are in Carlsbad. And uh, you said over here we got the Palmar Airport, so that might interfere, yeah. but. Yeah, they have jets and uh, helicopters coming in all the time, but this is uh, the Humbug. It was also called a Wombat. Uh, GM made them change the name of this kit car at some point. Um, it's a project I took over from a friend of mine. He had it for about 13 years. I uh, was originally going to go lead acid on it. Now it's a lithium powered uh, electric vehicle. I've done on the super, super cheap. Everything's been either cheap or free on this car. And um, making tiny steps on it to make it better and better as I go along. So I guess we could start in the back since this is a big DC motor in there, like a forklift motor. I think it's an advanced DC 1401. Uh, next to it there, you'll see the uh, part of the controller. It's a Zilla controller, 1000 amp controller. Uh, third or fourth iteration of controllers in here. Yeah. This one's water cooled, so there's a little pump here and a radiator to dissipate that heat. All off the controller. Gotcha. So just uh, keeps it cool enough, but it's only a PC radiator fan. It doesn't make that much heat. Tiny little fan. Um, the other brains of that controller are sitting in the back seat over here, covered by a backrest at some point, but for now it's easy to get to and operate yeah. on. So right now, it, this says it's a hairball Zilla interface, right. and you got some, you know, plenty more pins that you could connect there if there was if there was more need to but it doesn't need a lot what do you what do you got coming off that control board it's obviously running up to the front here yeah so for this car it doesn't have power windows power brakes power anything it doesn't need other pumps and things so right it's very simple so a lot of the stuff uh doesn't even get used on that controller to uh 400 amps maximum right now so i don't we're talking kill these batteries now we're getting to the good stuff. These are recycled batteries from a Volkswagen E-Golf, 2016 right. era. Uh, there's eight of them in here. It makes a 32S battery at about 134 volts, fully charged. So you got a you got a, a pack that's predominantly in the front, pulled out of some E-Golfs. Is this? Uh, when you when you pull those out of an e-golf is that a wreck that that you pulled them out of or in this case it was warranty repairs where they pulled an entire pack out and parted it out so and so yeah i said predominantly and this is so 100 percent of your batteries are in the front here right for right now yep so that rough looking metal rack that's on the back that will be for my extended battery pack that should give me about an the yeah. current e-golf batteries in the front only have about a 25 mile range. Well, it looks like uh, we should probably take this thing for a test drive. We should. Let me show you more up in the front here though while we're at it. This is the charger right here and it lets me plug in a regular J1772 normal charger into this thing and charge it anywhere I am. Very nice. Um, the brains of this thing are a Raspberry Pi computer right here with a CAN bus interface on it. It talks to these three BMS boards around the sides here, which uh, give me the battery voltages on all 32 cells that make up this battery pack. Uh, it also then transmits the data to my phone so I can see how high my batteries are, high or low, and uh, get some other things like GPS speed off of this thing over CAN bus and, and some other information to be able to log the data from the car when I'm driving and then analyze it later. These are, since these are all junkyard batteries, they've been charging and discharging at different rates and I've been weeding through them. So the, uh, I can right. pull the bad ones out as I see they're uh, not up to the task. So you, you could have them instrumented to some extent that like how, if, if you have a pack or a cell, if there's some, you know, if you, if you don't have control over knowing which one's bad? Do you have to kind of go at it with a voltmeter, meter or do you have the ability to kind of uh, go, with it and go in with a scalpel and excise the thing that you need to swap out? Yeah, I, I swap them out in packs only and these come out with four bolts and I've done it on the side of the road plenty of times. Gotcha. Um, 
without the instrumentation of a BMS on there, I've ruined many, many batteries. Eight to ten packs I've ruined by over-discharging them and, then, and also overcharging them. So now I know they're balanced. I stop the charging when the top cell hits the top voltage instead of keep plowing power into it, ruining the uh, cells and or at least shortening their lives. Well, so, I, I'd call that learn by doing. Right, that was one, one big step that I did in the beginning. I was just measuring voltage across an entire pack and or just measuring the entire voltage across everything that wasn't good enough. I killed lots of batteries and uh, had a couple of tow truck rides uh, because of that. There's, uh, there's, there's certainly uh, some other systems in here like lighting. Are we, are we looking at, at anything that you've, you know, are you looking at LEDs? Are you looking at standard? What did you, what, what yeah. comes off? Cause I, I think about uh, if I was to buy an EV, like a, a Nissan Leaf or a Tesla or anything out there, right? They're often doing things like saying, okay, we got a traction pack and we also have another pack for accessories. Yeah. Uh, what's your, what kind of, what kind of uh, work did you do to drive the motor, but also be able to power those, you know, sure you don't have, you don't have power door locks, you don't have doors, but you do have light. Right, so this is my 12 volt battery and you still need a regular, sort of regular 12 volt battery. I just didn't want any lead acid in here at all. So these are three modules from a, a, a Ford C-Max and there's a BMS on here that manages those. So then that's, that gets my 12 volts that normal car stuff needs. Um, the charger needs that for its signaling. The controller needs 12 volts also. And there's a DC to DC converter in here that acts like the alternator does in a regular car, keeping the 12 volt battery topped up all the time while you're driving. So yes, it still does need that as well. I did, however, change all the bulbs that I could in this car to LED, just so they don't burn out, they take the least amount of power as possible, and they look better, so. Well, it's, uh, this is this is totally awesome. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I might have to yeah. share it with a couple people, but uh, let's go take a ride. Feel free to post, yep. So this car maintains all three pedals. It still has a clutch. Uh, and the normal Volkswagen Beetle transmission and the gas pedal now is a Prius pedal which works better with this Zilla controller than the stock thing that was there and so right now in addition I'm noticing that you you put your phone uh, right there on the dash and you have another another guy here that says it's your battery capacity voltage so that's that's showing you what you got left in terms of juice and this then, is showing me only my 12 volt battery, how got charged it is. Because what I want to see is when I turn the key on, the DC to DC converter comes on and this goes up to 13 volts or whatever. That's how I know that I haven't blown a fuse in that thing and it's working. So gotcha. you can have a full traction battery, your high voltage battery is fine, but if your 12 volt dies, you're still stuck on the side of the road. So, Phone display here is showing me my highest battery, 3.9 volts, my lowest battery is 3.7 volts um, battery um, temperatures which isn't hooked up right now and the um, also the amperage being drawn from the, uh, the battery very cool it's a very basic uh, display that I made just to uh, I could see before I'm stranded and stuck on the side of the road yeah I get a little bit of warning before you uh, get a tow Normally, I leave it in third gear all the time. That's really the only one you need, except for reverse. Yeah, reverse is sometimes useful. Yeah. Some electric car conversions, you just reverse the polarity of the motor to go backwards, but this one I just left reverse in there. The YouTubers get the idea. We'll, uh, we'll say goodbye to them. Later, like and subscribe. I'm kidding. Don't like and don't subscribe.